From Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the home of Hot Chicken, it's the Rick Altizer Show. Sit back, buckle up. Rick will talk with the movers, shakers, and creators who put Christ in Christian entertainment. He's a man who's clear so the world can hear. Here's Rick Altizer. Welcome to the Rick Altizer Show. I am your host, Rick Altizer, and uh, you've seen, uh, he's, he's made it possible for you to see movies like God's Not Dead and Courageous and War Room, and he's kind of the man that helped get those uh, into theaters and get you to know about it. I'd like to welcome my guest, Bill Reeves from Working Title. Hello, Rick. How are you? I'm fine, Bill. Thanks for doing my show. I can't believe it. Glad to be doing it. What are you doing this for? You could be doing something important. This is important, Rick. (laughs) Encouraging people, showing them that there's a whole business behind the business is important. The man behind the business behind the business. Well, that's that's a great way to say it. So how how did you get, because I know you've been in different aspects from, from the music and publishing and all kinds of things you've done. How did you get to getting people to to watch movies in theaters? Well, I started my career much like you in the contemporary Christian music business and spent many years working for some of those bigger companies. And in one of those years, I ran across a kid's brand, a talking tomato and cucumber named Bob and Larry. (laughs) And um, I began to get involved with the VeggieTales brand back in 2000. That particular year, we began work on the first feature film from VeggieTales called Jonah, a VeggieTales movie. So that was our, that was my first screen credit and several people on my team. So that sort of gave us our first test and our first taste of this, of this business. So over the next few years, uh, one thing led to another, but it ultimately led, it led us back to the big screen on a film um, called Facing the Giants with two brothers out of Georgia, Stephen and Alex Kendrick, and their church, Sherwood Baptist Church. Yes. Chris Fuhrer, who is uh, a partner with me at Working Title Agency, uh, helped lead the marketing campaign for that film. We got to know the Kendricks. One thing led to another, and uh, we had been in business with those guys since then, worked on all of their films. But when you work... That would be Fireproof, Courageous, courageous. and now War Room. That's correct. For us, um, you know, as you well know, a success suddenly breeds success, and it weren't that we were the smartest guys in the room. It's just that facing the Giants work, then Fireproof works, our phone starts ringing, and people start asking us, hey, can, can you do that for us? It's led to some great relationships and people that we've loved partnering with through the years and, and doing many other films since then. What sets a, a Christian movie apart from a, a non-Christian movie? But we get lots of Christian movies. And what are some of the elements of a successful Christian movie? Sure. Um, we could certainly describe what is a Christian movie and what isn't a Christian movie. Pretty simply, uh, just by saying, does it contradict in any way, whether it's the story content or whether it's the things that the actors are asked to do or whether it's how the movie, how a particular part of the story is portrayed, does it align with Scripture or does it not? It, you know, would it offend a scriptural premise or would it support a scriptural premise? So for us, while we can use the Kendricks as an example, or we can use our friends at Pure Flix um, that do God's Not Dead, in, in many ways, you know, those seem very overtly Christian films. But I would argue that something like Soul Surfer would be equally as Christian because there wasn't anything in it that was necessarily biblically wrong. It was just Bethany living out her life in a very honest, real way. And so it was we, a movie about a, a, a young surfer girl who had a, uh, was it a shark, a, a shark, shark accident? Took her arm off. And so then the... That's right. And all the drama that unfolded around that. But Bethany was a Christian and her faith got her through that difficult time. And so for us, it's anything that lives in that gamut uh, from one end to the other. Uh, Phil Vischer at VeggieTales used to get asked is... VeggieTales, a Christian company. And I always loved his answer. He said, well, it's not Christian or non-Christian. It doesn't go to heaven when it dies. It's a company. And film is that way too, you know. Uh, It's what you put in it that is actually the definition of Christian or not. Um, But we also believe that, that you could argue that maybe faith film isn't necessarily a genre, but it's an audience type. 
the, the audience is more the Christian and more the faith aspect of it. So if we're making content that's sensitive to them, then that for us is a successful Christian film. I've noticed though, certain Christian movies from a, just a box office standpoint, mm -hmm. seem to connect better yes. than others. And you'll see a movie come out and, you'll, and for some reason it, it isn't connecting. Well, why do you think some movies connect better than other movies? Well, first and foremost, and, and I would, Rick, never <clears throat> say that any of us could take credit for the successes. Um, we certainly feel like sometimes God just shows up in ways that none of us even expected. Mm. You know, God's Not Dead is a great example of that. And so... I believe it was 70 million? It was, it was 61 million at the box office, but then another, I mean, they're well over $100 million in revenue with all the DVD sales. For an independent else. movie is just yeah. unheard of. Yeah, that the all in was under $10 million to make it and market it. So we always attribute the hand of God to things like that. Yes. But when it comes to just these tangible things that we try to make note of, um, we, we believe that the audience does not want to be offended. They don't want their beliefs offended. So sometimes films that are well made but say have bad language in it, you know, for the sake of being, you know, what the filmmaker would argue makes it more authentic. Um, we say, <clears throat> don't worry as much about authenticity as about effectiveness, because bad language will take your audience out of the film and you'll lose your effectiveness of your story. That can hurt it. Um, so there's always those sort of intellectual arguments that you could make around those things. But at the end of the day, the audience doesn't want to be offended. And the ones that do better are less offensive to the audience. We also think we, we, we have a saying around the office that Christians need to be told and like to be told that they're right. Um, it's not a it's not a self-centered thing. It's just that Christians today are being so bombarded in our culture and are made to really feel like second class citizens and that their opinion no longer matters in the public forum. So when a film comes along that says, you know what, you're right, you are right, boy, they just, they need that affirmation. <clears throat> and that has been a common theme of the films that do very well. Very interesting. So uh, we see that. Mm. And then, of course, um, it, it's how can a story be made personal <clears throat> to someone? You know, I'll use the Kendricks, for example. One of the things that we do for them is we're their literary agents. So we help them create their curriculum, we help them create their novelizations, their Bible studies, the things that go along with a film. One of the things that Kendrick movies do is they challenge you so that when the movie is over, you're left asking the question, now what do I do? And so films that, that leave the viewer with a, a really solid takeaway and a, and a very personal application, daily application of their life, and that maybe even have ancillary products that help you go deeper in answering that question, <clears throat> those tend to do very well uh, as well. Um, where movies seem to come off the, the track is when filmmakers make art for the sake of art without their end customer in mind. And that's where the name of our agency came from, Working Title Agency. We're, we're marketers by trade, but we're, we want to be involved at the working title phase of movie development, where we can not take over the creative, but speak into it along the way in order to make it more appealing to the consumer. You're listening to The Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio, 89.1 FM, 1160 AM, Nashville. For our listeners, a working title. When you when you start a movie, you start a project. You'll have a working title. It'll be a, something you'll make up. That okay, this is, we're not sure what the title of our movie is going to be or our book. This is just kind of a working title. That's uh, right. You know, prayer room. Like for instance, war room. The working title could have been possibly prayer room. That's right. And then as the movie goes, it turns into war room. Becomes yeah. But through a lot of collaboration between the filmmakers and their team around them. It's a process. So I, I, I've often thought, and I'd, I'd love to get your feedback on this, because you know, now I'm going to pontificate, and I would, love, I would love to get your feedback. I, I've told you, I, I like to hang around people who are smarter than me, and I consider you one of those people, so I always like to hang around you. Uh, Rick's sliding me a 20 right now. <laughs> Actually, I'm giving him one. That's right. I'll, hey, and I need it. I just had an expensive lunch here. But uh, uh, I wanted to, uh, to, to just run this by you. you know, I, I've seen people try to please 
all the audience. It's like, well, let's, let's tone down our Christian message a bit so that we don't offend anybody and we want to draw in the, the secular world. So we're going to kind of sneak our, sneak our message in and we're going to sneak the, the gospel in. Maybe we're going to kind of lighten it up a bit. And I see those tanking. I think, I think the Christian audience can spot a fake a mile away when they know this is, this is a secular company trying to make a Christian movie or this is a Christian movie trying to, to please both people. And when I look at the, the war rooms and the fireproofs and the courageous, I see a sermon on, on film. Right. I mean, it, it's a total different concept. Mm-hmm. It's I'm going to tell you something uh, that's true about Jesus and I'm not tainting it at all. Yes. And it seems to me the more Christian you make it, mm-hmm. the more successful it becomes. <laughs> Uh, and I would just love your feedback and your take on that. Sure. It's, a, it's an interesting observation, Rick. We, um, what I would say to you is imagine the faith genre, if you will, even going against maybe what I said earlier, call it a genre for a moment. Those sermon on films are a slice of the pie. There's no question that there is a piece of the audience that wants that. Um, and, and I believe one of the reasons why is it does affirm them and it challenges them. But when you have people come along that are trying to force their way into that because they think there's some formula there, that's where it sort of comes off the rails because, as you say so well, people can spot a fake a mile away. And even if they hit all the right beats, there's still a genuineness to it that's missing. And one of the things, even I'll give you an example of our agency. <clears throat> I sat in, some, in front of someone last week, and they said, well, tell me about your agency. And I said, well, we're a, a faith-based marketing and product development agency. And there was sort of this, oh, like faith and family? And I was like, no, not faith and family, faith. That's what we do. That's all we do. I'm not competing with Nickelodeon and Pixar and Disney on the family side. We are competing only in the faith, the Christian faith space. So if we're not your agency, and, and that piqued his interest, and he, you know, he said, well, tell me more because I really want to understand. That's what we're looking for. And unfortunately, Christians skirt around that issue a lot. They feel like they need to become palatable to the Hollywood infrastructure. So they'll, they'll, they'll water down what they're doing. They won't be as overt in their beliefs. But to your observation, the more direct, the more effective it is. So we look at it as an opportunity not only to tell genuine stories with genuine filmmakers in genuine genres, but to do it unashamedly and to just be who we are. And God has blessed that because it's so different when, than just calling yourself family because they know that. They know how to make that. They don't know how to make what, what we do. And it, as you know, the, the Shonda movie I did was just, you know, whatever. It just was the success that none of us thought it would be. But because of that, now we, we've been approached. Mm-hmm. Um, her manager is, is a, you know, large secular manager, yeah. you know, man, yeah. managing Billy Crystal and yeah. used to manage Robin Williams and all these secular, big, big time comedians. And so he's got the access to these people who who aren't from the Christian industry. They're, they're out to make a buck. Yep. And they saw, you know, the dollar signs to the Shonda movie that we did. Right. And they see the dollar signs to War Room and, and God's Not Dead. Now, I know God's Not Dead 2 is coming out. And, right. and so, they're, you know, they're, they're seeing the dollar, the cash register is, is jingling and jingling in their ears. Yes, it is. And so it's like, hey, how can we make some of that there uh, Christian movie? Yep. Let's go get us a Christian movie. Yep. Uh, and, and it concerns me. Because uh, I'm seeing all these Christian movies being made, and yep. I know a, I know a lot of it is just money coming from people who are saying, "Hey, we can make a quick buck here," right. and and I'm concerned because I don't think they're going to be successful mm-hmm. because it's not coming from what we're talking about this ministry oriented concept. It's just right. how to make a buck. I think the market's going to pick up on it, and then and then I'm just wondering, you know, how is that going to pollute the yeah. the, the market as yep. a well, it's a great question, and especially as you yourself, who or as a fine filmmaker in your own right, as you seek to explore the opportunities in front of you. But it, before I answer that question, let me ask you a question. If you have to ship your Christian film master 
from where you live in Nashville, Tennessee, to a producer or a distributor in Los Angeles. How do you get it there? I put it in the, the uh, FedEx. I have FedEx That's pick right. it up and take That's it. That's right. You, you didn't start a Christian shipping company to do that, did you? No. <clears throat> you no. just used... The delivery system that was there. You used the delivery system that's there. We do the same. We look at those people who are just in it for the money as delivery system. What we don't do is become what we would call unequally yoked with them. So, for example, we work with some of the finest distributors in Los Angeles. They're great people. Uh, They may have a completely different worldview from us. They're not believers. They don't know Jesus. They don't understand it. But they're really, really good at what they do. They're good at booking theaters. They're good at shipping DVDs to Walmart. They're good at cutting digital deals with Netflix. So for us, it's about working with them and in the process, hopefully showing them that there's a group of people who can do business in a more ethical, different way than, than maybe some of the other filmmakers that they work with that are always trying to take advantage of them. So for us, but at the same time, we would not let them take control of our content to the point that they would negatively affect the message of Christ that's being shown in the film. You're listening to The Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio, 89.1 FM, 1160 AM, Nashville. Because I heard uh, Stephen Kendrick was talking about this, and he said that he has it in the contract with Sony that they control the theology. That's correct. That Sony can't come in and tell them that's correct. to make a change. If it's, a, if it's anything about theology, yeah. that's a going into it. So, so what I'm yeah. hearing you say is, in order for this to work, you need to have that understanding up front we're going to make this Christian. You can't tell us. Well, you know, you're talking a little bit, a lot about Jesus there. Couldn't right. that be about, you know, uh, anybody? Yeah. You know, uh, you, you're really. Uh, Can you make it more generic? Yeah. You're, yeah. You're really. Well, think of all the people you're, you're leaving out by, yeah. by doing that. That's Couldn't right. You, just... you know, st- some listeners to Stephen may go, well, yeah, of course, Stephen, you get the right to do that. You've done you know, $150 million in box office in all your films, so of course you can make those demands. I can't as a young filmmaker. And what I would say is, yes, you can. We've cut deals with major studios where we got first-time filmmakers the right to control the theology of their film. So it's, it's not that, you know, they're the devil with horns on their heads. It's just there are lines you draw in the sand where you say, you know what, this is, this is important to us. This is what makes us different. And so we want to control this part of the content. So how, how have you had input with what you do? Because I know that's what kind of makes you different from other marketing mm-hmm. people is that you actually working title in the front end of these projects sure. you're involved in. I'd love to get your input on that and then transition that into War Room, yeah, kind of what you did sure. before War Room. Um, our firm is really um, here to provide business solutions for filmmakers. Most of the creatives we work with hate the business side of the business. They don't want to negotiate contracts. They'd rather be in the editing bay than in the distribution boardroom. But we love that. That's what we love to do. Um, our team is... Uh, highly qualified. You know, I've got employees that came from Sony, that came from DreamWorks, that came from Provident Films, that came from uh, uh, some of the biggest packaged goods companies in the United States. And these are seasoned business veterans who love supporting wonderful creatives. So we get involved in four ways. We, you've already mentioned the marketing side of what we do. We do consumer products and licensing. Uh, which helps monetize film outside of the theater. That's selling like books right. and Bible studies, T-shirts, T-shirts. I was going to say hats, cards, whatever. You, you know. got it. If it's got the, the the movie's name on it, you know. That's you do right. It, you That's know. exactly right. Okay. Number three is we help with distribution services. We're not a distributor, but we go to distributors and we help strike the deals. We stay up on what the current terms are so that you know we can try to get our clients good deals. So when you say distribution, are you talking about getting it into theaters or are you talking about getting it into Walmart all or both? Of, all of the above. So getting their, getting their film yep. to where people can get to it. That's right. You help distribute it to consumers. That's right. That's exactly right. So we help it find its audience. <clears throat> and then last, and the one that, that has opened certainly a lot of doors for us, is we are involved with film finance. So we, our company runs three hedge funds 
that do three different stages of film development. We have a development fund, we have a equity production fund, and we have a marketing P&A fund. And so what we do is we review content and we try to help filmmakers do the one thing <clears throat> that inevitably eludes them, which is to try to find money to make their movies. Mm -hmm. um, or they find money, but it comes with so many strings that they lose control of the theology of their films and they lose control of the distribution of their films. Which is self-defeating at that That's point. Right. Because now you've guaranteed you're not going to have a success. That's right. Let's talk about then uh, the, your process with War Room. I'm interested to hear, hear about that. Well, we have worked with Stephen and Alex for eight years now. So, you know, it was exciting to see how God took, you know, two brothers from southwest Georgia and put a, put a mission on their heart, and it went to the number one spot in the box office. And, you know, we all just sat around just raising our hands to God going, you know, you're, that, it's so ridiculous to think that this movie could be the number one movie in the country, that the only way that could happen is through God. Hey, I got an idea. Let's do a movie about an elderly African-American's prayer closet. Yes, yes. There you go. That's the, you know, they're going to jump well, in line for that. You imagine, know that? imagine that day in the pitch office at the Sony lot uh -huh. in Los Angeles, you know. Two white guys from South Georgia come in and pitch an African-American movie on prayer. I got to say, there were probably a lot of crickets in the room that day. Mm -hmm. But you know what? What we love about Stephen and Alex, and this is what we look for in anybody that we're working with, is we're not looking for somebody who can go pull all the comps and the formulas and tell us and manufacture a successful movie. We're looking for people who are listening to the heartbeat of God and paying attention to what He's put on their heart, and we're trying to get involved with that. It's very much, if, if your listeners have ever gone through the book Experiencing God, it's very much that principle that Dr. Blackaby teaches. Hey, we can go out all day long and try to do things for God, and nine times out of ten, they're going to fall on deaf ears. But when we go out and look where he's moving and plug into his movement, we will be used by him in ways we could never imagine. It's not about a good idea, it's about a God idea. That's exactly right. And uh, the movie really wasn't about an elderly woman's prayer closet. It was about the importance of prayer, which goes beyond that genre. And, and it, it's all of us, all Christians need to hear that, need to see that. That's so. right. One of our, our filmmaking partners named Brian Ivey, he did a film called The Dropbox, which was an incredible documentary. I about love that. Pastor Lee. And Wonderful. Our, saving babies' lives. Yep. And our partnership with Focus on the Family, we brought that to the marketplace. Did it win an Oscar? No, but it changed people's lives. Yes. And so it isn't always, we, don't, we never want to be fooled into thinking that our success is defined by the numbers of the box office. However, it's so expensive to make a movie. It is. And it's so expensive to market a movie because America is a big place. It is And indeed. to get everybody in America to know about a movie costs a whole lot of money. It does. It does indeed. We're dealing with that with God's Not Dead right now. We're opening on 1,500 screens on April 1st. But it's millions and millions and millions of dollars running through our office to try to activate and notify Christians and their friends that want to come see it that April 1st, you got to be there. And it's one of the harder things as a marketer I've had to do in my career. Um, you know, when you release a new album, yeah, you want it to do well the first week, but it'll sell for three years. But a movie, it's all dependent on those first couple of days. And it's, it's like an election. You got to get people out to vote. It's important for viewers to come that first week. That's exactly it, right. It, it's going to help that move. It's going to help them make that money back. And it is expensive yes. to make Christian movies. And so if you like Christian movies, you want to see more God based, focused movies. I encourage you to get out there that first week. And, and you know what? Sony's and these guys are going to go, let's keep making this. We're making money. So, yep. you know, the, the delivery systems are going to keep delivering yep. as long as they're getting a paycheck at the end. Yep. Uh, so uh, just as we close, I'm going to have you close us out. What is it you'd like to see as the future of, of Christian film? Just yep. how would you like to see us? We want to pour into the next generation. We need uh, strong content generators. We need strong business people. We pour into Liberty University's film school. Uh, we invest in them. We believe in them. We invest money and time into their program. We need to stop looking at Hollywood as the devil and stop sitting on the sideline throwing stones, and we need to get in the game. 
And that's, yes. what, that's what we're doing. Make a difference. That's right. Bill, thank you so much for being part Thanks of the show. Thanks for having me, Rick. What a wonderful insight uh, behind the scenes of the Christian movie industry with, with Bill Reeves from uh, Working Title Group. And I'm so glad, uh, so glad you're here. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I would love to connect with you online. You can get more info on my website, rickaltizer.com, or how about on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash show. By the way, Altizer is spelled A-L-T-I-Z-E-R. I want to thank the great folks at Bot Radio for supporting the show, and most importantly, I want to thank you for listening. I'd love to hear from you, so be sure to check us out again next week as we discuss how we communicate the gospel through media to our culture. Let's be clear so the world can hear. I'll talk to you next week, and thanks for listening. Bye.